The Adventures of the Worst Background Character Ever, Sid, continues in Eminence of Shadow, Episode 8. I really don't get this guy. <laughs> I think I'm going to forever be talking about how I don't get where his mind goes when it comes to him being a background character. Because he always does the things that aren't very background character. But it's fine, because he does things that I want him to do. I want him to protect Rose. I want him to protect Sherry. <laughs> but still, it is kind of funny in his own mind talking about how he did a perfect execution of something... And like I pretty much predicted, yes, it makes Rose fall in love with him. Oh, you love me all along. Oh, poor Sid. Yeah, she's going to be all over you after this. So we'll see where that goes. But uh, decent episode. I really enjoyed it. I, I think I got most of the kick out of this whole situation with Sherry terribly sneaking around like like she's never snuck before. And Sid having to save her the whole time. And then finally, at the very end, having to confront her and say, look, you're terrible. <laughs> You don't, you don't speak out loud when you're walking, sneaking around. You're wearing those flip flops. They're terrible. You're doing a terrible job of sneaking. Uh, it was really good. I really enjoyed it. But no, I was kind of surprised. I almost was thinking that it was a recap segment at the very beginning, but it actually showed us the inner thoughts of Sid, which I think some people were criticizing the last episode impressions is that they cut out what he was thinking about at the time, which was, yes, that he was super excited that <laughs> this is like a total scenario that's on his bucket list is his academy taken over by a bunch of people so that was <laughs> apparently something crossed off his list but it was still funny that even in the end he didn't like it because they were dressed in long coats and that was completely not aesthetically pleasing because you only wear those in the night which what he does but know that he couldn't allow this idea of her being taken down first rose being taken down first so that played into my big thought process of i still haven't quite gotten sid yet I really don't know him as a character in the idea that would he be so willing to be a self-sacrifice? It does seem like he kind of died. <laughs> he kind of died. <laughs> like they literally did hit, you know, a nice fatal blow, but he just stopped his own heart and slowly supplied blood to the brain and then started his own heart up back up, which I think was, that's pretty hardcore. <laughs> that is pretty hardcore in order to become a background character that saves one of the main girls and makes her fall in love with you. But... <laughs> I'm just going to keep harping on that. I'm going to bug the snot out of some people by harping on that. But I think that's the joke. Honestly, I think that's the joke that, I mean, unless they're adapting this wrong, I think that's supposed to be the joke that he's just so stupid about being a background character. And he's so, I, again, I, I think there's like an element of him just desiring to be the hero, but not, obviously he wants to be the Eminence Shadow. He wants to be a hero of the dark, but I don't think that's something that he can overcome when something's before him. And again, I don't think it's necessarily... Rose, no, Rose can't be harmed. It's literally, I want to be the one that does that. This is an opportunity for me to do something crazy cool. And again, it leads to him just being brought out as being somebody that saves somebody and everybody's attention coming to him. But now at some point we cut over to Sherry. She's obviously being attacked by Rex, who is coming to get the pendant that she has because the pendant is required apparently for this big artifact that's causing this mana thing, which we come to find out is this thing that's drawing all the mana into it. And if it draws enough and it comes to its capacity, it will poof and blow up. But it seems like this artifact hey, is able to control that mana as well. So that's why Rex comes after it. Their leader sent him over to get it. And that's when we have Glenn, I think his name was, and Marco jump to protect her. Uh, apparently Glenn's gone. So <laughs> bye Glenn. Too much of a side character. Bye Glenn. <laughs> but no, it seems as if uh, at least Marco survived, which that's obviously they had to have the case because we've already pointed out that he has some sort of connection with New, which they did get into at some point. New found both Glenn dead and finds Marco. But then there's the weird thing. Here's the big question mark moment. She goes to attack him like she goes to finish him off. And then that's when Sid comes in looking for some materials for Sherry. And she, Sid doesn't care. He's like, hey, what's up? What are you doing? And she's like, oh, um, yeah, he's my betrothed. <laughs> and he's like, well, what do you plan on doing with him? Well, I have no reason to do anything to him. Oh, that's fine then. Whatever. <laughs> like, it's almost like this moment of she's like, oh, crap, he caught me. Well, what does he think about the situation? Well, he doesn't seem to care, but that's just Shadow. That's just that's just him. I think that's one of those really kind of quirky things about this series is how it, it always seems like these girls think he has some intelligent input. And there's always something like really kind of serious happening at the time. But he ultimately doesn't care he's always focused on something else and so it always kind of turns into this like all right i guess we're not doing <laughs> like normally this is a big character moment where he's gonna find out why new is having issues with her betrothed and why she would looking like she's gonna kill him 
that seems important, but Sid just doesn't care. So we're we're probably going to end up finding about the situation over time as she's just kind of there explaining and he doesn't care. But I don't know. It, again, she kind of notes the idea that, oh, look, you've joined the Crimson Order. So she's acknowledging that he's changed to being part of this group. But additionally, it does seem like she doesn't like him. Now, two theories that come to my mind is, yeah, the more, I don't know, less likely but seemingly possible is that she sees that he's down and that she wants to take him out so that she's not wed to him anymore. But I don't know, I guess that depends on if she has an actual life outside of being a part of the Shadow Garden. Does she still function normally? Does she still a part of society? I would think not because it seemed to give us an indication that she got that mana overload thing too and that Sid, or not Sid, but uh, Gamma or somebody saved her. So my assumption there is similar to Alpha, she's probably deemed as dead. And if that's the case, then she's not really betrothed anymore. But if she were still in society, then yes, she's locked into marrying him, even though it doesn't seem like they've seen each other for a while. She didn't know that he was part of the Crimson Order. So that gets into my other theory is that she blames him for her being mana overloaded or whatever happened to her if that's not the case. In which point, I guess at some point we're gonna get a revelation that no, it wasn't the case or he accidentally did it or something. I don't know how much credit I can give to the brief flashback that we got where they were dancing in the ballroom and he grabbed her hand and then she became, I don't know, this blob that was crawling on her arm. Did he pass on mana to her and cause that? Or is it just a symbolism that she was with him at some point and later on something happened and it just kind of piecing all together? But we'll see. Um, interesting either way. But yeah, that's when we have Sid basically spot Sherry running around. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. They translated at him saying, Sherry, you're cute, but you're going to get caught kind of thing. And I didn't hear kawaii or anything like that in this the phrasing. They, he did say Sherry Chan. But it seemed like a really weird translation. I don't see him saying, Sherry, you're cute. That's not Sid. <laughs> that seems like a mistranslation or at least a, I don't know, overblowing a translation a little bit too much. Again, I think it's kind of out of character for Sid to call anybody cute. He just doesn't really seem like he has that kind of affection with people. He seems very disconnected with anybody in a, an attraction or anything like that. But yeah, eventually he confronts her, reprimands her. <laughs> and then tries to help her out, learns about the artifact and everything, which yes, they're kind of laying out that this thing is possibly near the actual auditorium where they're keeping everybody and it's absorbing all their magical energy so they can eventually boom. And yes, eventually Rex comes, Sid beats him up, takes a piece of crap out of him, <laughs> has like an entire classroom full of bodies, <laughs> it's a little bit screwed up. Yeah, and then Sid runs into New, she explains that everybody's here. The only of the seven that's here is Gamma, and of course Gamma's not very combat ready, but she is commanding everybody and is ready for his command. Now, here's the weird thing, because at some point we do get to see the leader, and he was talking to Rex at some point. And I'm still, I'm still waiting for them to explain why they're called Shadow Garden. And I'm assuming that eventually it's going to be explained. Why name yourself Shadow Garden? What purpose does that have? Technically going by history, it could be a possibility that he made Shadow Garden thinking it's an original idea in this world based on something, and come to find out there was already a Shadow Garden, that's probably why he got the name from. Kind of similar to the whole thing with the Cult of Diablos. It's actually something that actually exists, even though he thought that he made it up. Other than that, they might be possibly doing that to get the attention of the actual Shadow Garden. And the reason why they want the Shadow Garden's attention is because I believe for this particular situation, they need the Shadow Garden. Like they're purposely drawing them in because they need their magic capability, their mana capability. If they want this thing to go off, maybe they know that the Shadow Garden is full of potentials and so they're trying to draw them in to make this thing go off. Which at that point, having all these, all the Shadow Garden members coming there, seems like that's a playing into their hand, I guess. But I don't know, maybe we'll eventually find that out. Now, of course, another big question mark they left us with is going back to my previous theories is, I really do believe that Sherry's adopted father is a bad guy somehow. They're gonna make him a bad guy. It's just every sign points to this is a bad guy that killed Sherry's mother, brought him in under the guise that she's he's trying to help her. Oh, I, I work with your mother. I'll take care of you. I'll let you do your research just like your mother did. He's using Sherry, no doubt in my mind. Curious that the entire episode, this guy's completely vacant. And additionally, Sherry mentions the idea that this artifact they're using, this the possible artifact they're using because it kind of has all the signs that it's the same one that Sherry's father, adopted father, researched. And he said that it he noticed that it was this thing that would build up mana and then eventually it would explode. And so he gave it off to the government. I don't think he did. I don't think he did. I think he gave it to these guys. 
<laughs> and so with him being completely missing this entire episode and Sherry at some point kind of mentioning her father, yeah, he's totally a part of this. Now, question mark is, is he's the dude that's in this knight's outfit. That's a that's a good possibility. I don't think so. But he, he could be giving off this bruise that he's weak and he's coughing all the time just to throw the scent off. But he's definitely working for them, even if he's not the guy in the armor. But yeah, good episode overall. Lots of cute Sherry moments. I, I kind of wish that we had more of the girls showing up at the field and having their slime outfits peeling away. I got to kick out that brief moment that they're sitting on that, that branch and she's like, oh, crap, <laughs> it's peeling away. Uh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. I think if you want to fight against the, the Shadow Garden girls, it's time to, to bring out some way of taking away mana. That way, at least you'll get to see something before you die, I guess. But no, I got a kick out of the fact that Sherry's, like, sneaking around the school. And the entire time, like, this is one of those, like, gravity makes no sense whatsoever. It's like she's crawling around and her skirt somehow still manages to uh, completely encompass the front end of her pelvis. It's just like, sure, okay. <laughs> it makes no sense gravity wise but sure anyhow that's my thoughts on episode eight of innocent shadow hope you guys enjoyed this video as always if you did make sure that like button down below comment let me know what's thought of the episode subscribe to the channel if you've not already i do news reviews first impressions top list if it's anime it's pretty much here additionally if you want to support the channel more we have a patreon link tips link and a super thanks button down below greatly appreciate it, but it does and i'll take care